enough chubs out there, you just gotta get beyond the chubs, huh? That's it. Well, Chris has got us on the spot here. What do we got on the bottom down here, Chris? Uh, we're just west of the Tortugas on a Tortuga Bank, just off the edge of a reef. Uh, drops from about 60 feet down to 140. Now all these fish will congregate right on the edge here. So you just wait for your line to start peeling out or are you gonna feel them thump it? You'll feel it just start ripping out. Uh, we just gotta get behind the chubs here and we should be good. It's kind of funny, the first time I ever yellowtailed fish, they said, let the bait drift back like a natural bait. And I'm thinking, what do you mean like a natural bait? We're using dead bait. But what Chris is doing here and what the yellowtail fishermen do, they have a chum bag, usually shake it out and all the little bits and pieces of bait go back with the tide. As you can see this chum slick back behind us, basically what that means is just let your bait drift back naturally with the tide. You don't want to have a tight line with it like this because if it's not drifting back, it doesn't look natural to the fish. So just basically let it drift back with the current as soon as your line starts peeling off a little faster than what the current's taking it, you know you got a fish on there. Then you just w w set the hook. When in doubt, set the hook. Oh, Chubby, leave it alone. The Chubber got it. Unless it was a yellow tail, it came up real quick. Oh yeah, it was a little yellow tail. Best eating. Let's see if we get a double. Oh, yeah. D flags, baby. Ow. They got fins. Oh, it's a monster. A little bigger. Well, welcome to this episode of Addictive Fishing. It is now day two of our trip to the Tortugas with the Starbright crew. We got Captain Pete up top putting us on the spot. We got Captain Chris Trossett with us giving Captain Pete the numbers. And uh, that's the targeted species right now. Y'all stay tuned, we're gonna be right back, show you a bunch more flags, a bunch more big fish in the well. <laughs> Mangy is just Chris. You got something on the big rod. Uh-oh, Chris has got him a grown one down there. Did you put that yellow tail down? Nah, it's... Well. What other kind of stuff you catch other than yellowtail around here? Uh, we get some assorted jacks, yellow jacks, bar jacks, uh, occasional African pompano. We get groupers, mutton snappers, mangrove snappers. Mangies. Mixed bag. This is the land of the giant, giant flags, otherwise known as yellowtail. Not California yellowtail. That's more like an amberjack. You ever fished out there? I haven't. They look like they'd be fun though. Good it pull. Was. We were out there catching those calico bass, man. It was pretty neat. <laughs> you want to check and see what's down there for tomorrow, huh? Let's see what's down here. I'm going to drop this bottom rig down. I got about 10 feet of Seaguar fluorocarbon, 60 pound. It's uh, really tough against those rocks. You can get rocked up and uh, you can still pull them right out. That's about the same setup we use off Canaveral for grouper. It feels like a fish. Yes, it was. Oh. Yeah. I think something grabbed that yellow tail. And just let it go. I bet this yellow tail is flat as a pancake. <laughs> yep. Uh -oh. <laughs> that yellow tail don't look so pretty anymore. Something grabbed him. Well, at least whatever grabbed him doesn't get to eat him, I do. Yeah, he's all scaled. Legal size on these are what? 12 inches. I think he'll make it. I think he'll make it. Well, I don't like to let them go when you know they're gonna die anyway. With the scales missing like that, they get that ick on them and eventually they just die. So I'd rather see him die and go to the frying pan here than some big grouper out there. 
Or an AJ. Or Those an are AJ. two giant AJs I just saw over There's there. There's been an AJ there. You see this lovely bloody bait we got here for the snappers. Hopefully some uh, big yellow tails and some big old uh, mangies of crystal. We got something on the big rod. Uh-oh, Chris has got him a grown one down there. Feel pretty heavy on that meat stick there? It's pretty heavy. <laughs> you love when somebody trying to talk to you when you're fighting a <laughs> What is it? What is it? Here you go. Surface rod on the other side. Uh-oh. <laughs> Something just screamed out on this one. Now what we did here is we're yellowtail fishing. We got a bottom bait down on that side. We had a surface bait out on this side. You get kingfish here too? Oh yeah. On my leader. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh. Look at that size of that grouper. You your hand on that one? Again. Again. <laughs> That's a real one. That's what I'm talking about. That is a real one. And what opens tomorrow? <laughs> black season. Man. So that's a black, huh? It's a black grouper. That is a serious grouper there, brother. That's a nice one. 30 pounds. Let go. Wow. Good <laughs> job on that one, man. That is a beautiful fish. Yes, sir? That's one sweet one, and that's a, that's a lucky fish because grouper season opens tomorrow. We'll be back for you. You gonna dump him? Let this guy go. And off he goes to All the right. wild blue yonder. Brother, hey, that was a cool fish. Ever get a chance to do it right here with Chris Trossett? We're gonna go to break. Y'all stay tuned. We'll be right back with the Starbright crew. West of the Dry Tortuga is catching some awesome fish. We'll be right back. Let's go then. What you got a hold of there? I don't know. Ate a jig. Ate a jig? Uh-oh, he's catching my pompano over there. Welcome back, folks. We're still sitting here doing our thing with a yellowtail, hoping maybe some mangies come up, African pompano, who knows? But uh, one of Captain Chris's favorite spots here. Where'd you get these numbers? <laughs> if I told you, I'd have to leave you here. Yeah. <laughs> How long does this fishery go on for as far as catching yellowtail? Uh, it's pretty much year round. We got them at the reefs. I'd say the summer months are usually better. They spawn during the summer, but uh, you, you can catch them year round. Down here is the land of the giants, right? Yeah, we find some big ones down here. We've been down here once before and caught some that were up seven, eight pounds. Oh. Man, they were, they were like this. They were just huge. Those are true flags there. That's more on the Atlantic side, isn't it? Yep. Must be chasing him. Well, not be chasing him. Nice. Then something comes up, take a look at him. Oh, that's a pretty one. What's the uh, what's the limits on these? Uh, they're gonna be 12 inches long. You can keep 10 per person. 10 per person. So you can actually come down here and book Chris and be able to take you some fish home. Because I tell you what, these guys are about the tastiest, uh, about the tastiest snapper you can get. Uh, 
One of my favorite is still the mangies. Mangrove snapper, what Chris calls mangies, but uh, these will do in a pinch, huh? I think they will. All right. You say you got African pompano here. What's their favorite food? Ah, uh, they like cut bait normally. Yeah? Yeah. Kind of what we're doing here? Pretty much. We just gotta get lucky. Yeah, do they get in the chum slick too? Yeah, occasionally they will. What you got a hold of there? I don't know. Ate a jig. Ate a jig? Uh-oh, he's catching my pompano over there. <laughs> Reef donkey surprise. Nah, I think another grouper. Oh, red. Are they in season or not? Uh, nope. That's probably the biggest red grouper I've ever seen right there. That is one pretty fish. Everything's big down here in Jurassic Park. Man, that's a pretty fish right there. Red grouper, another lucky one today. Cause tomorrow it opens. They have got some awesome colors, don't they? They're a pretty fish. They are red warm. mouth, it's great. Yeah, check out their mouth. All nice and red and orange in there. Looks orange through these shades. But that's a good one and a lucky one. Gonna hide the hook? Yep. on the chubs. Let it slope back. Couple of chubs down there. You know why there's so many of those, don't you? Yeah, those are an endless supply. Yeah, that's because the Cubans don't eat them. Yeah, that's about <laughs> it. Come back for it there. It's amazing how these little fish pull. Now Chris, these are about the mainstay of the Florida Keys restaurants down there, aren't they? Yeah, you'll see those on just about every menu in the Keys. And they, the reason is they're tasty and they're plentiful. And these are some pretty darn big ones. Just little chunks of bonita. Glad they don't have teeth like those mangroves. <laughs> or as you call them, mangies. Mangies. It's mangies if they get a hold of you. That right there is a perfect specimen of a yellowtail. These fish have some awesome colors and like every fish, it's got that lateral line. Helps them pick up vibrations of other smaller fish that they're wanting to eat down there. That is a beautiful fish. The reason they fight so well is look at the size of that tail. And they use every part of it. There's some nice yellows and purples and greens, peach colored cheeks. And the best thing about them, they are tasty. Y'all stay tuned, we're gonna be right back with some more addictive fishing, crisscross it, the west bank of the Tortugas, and uh, hopefully some little bigger yellowtail. We'll be right back. Let's go then. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That would be Mr. Grouper there. Since it's day three, we were talking about it yesterday, it's grouper season, so we're gonna put pinfish down and see if we can exchange this little guy for a great big guy. I like to hook them right through the nose there because they'll stay on. It's really good. There's a little good piece of cartilage right there in his nose and he won't get tugged off real easy. 
So let's send him down to the group of grounds. How deep are we, Chris? We're sitting about 90 feet just off the edge of the reef here. Now we're gonna be trying to catch some yellowtails. We'll use for bait later. Now we got a bottom rod down just in case there's a grouper lurking underneath. There's always a chance that, you know, the kingfish, bonitas, stuff like that on the surface. I think we even saw a few dolphin earlier. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That would be Mr. Grouper there. Well, Chris, I think we got what we're looking for on the end of this line, if I can get him up out of these rocks. That looks a little better. Gotta give them what they want, Blair. They got holes and stuff that let me go into down here too? Oh yeah, this is really reefy bottom, a lot of big ledges right on the drop off here. See a little color down there. Is it the right color? It's looking black. All right. Well, it is now day three, which means this one can come to the boat. All right. Woo, to wear you out too. You want this hook? That one will work. That's a nice keeper. That is the perfect size right there. Yes, sir. That's the size I like to take home. Mr. Grupa. Couple nice of nice, one, buddy. Couple of nice big fat fillets on that one. Now, with all the new regulations and laws, what is the uh, limits on these now? Uh, blacks are one per person. They got to be 24 inches. And I think he well exceeds the 24 inch mark. So. That is a nice fish right there. Ah, I haven't been able to catch and hold one of these in so long, <laughs> just because the season's been closed. But uh, this one, I'm gonna invite home. <laughs> you can come home with it. <laughs> you can come. Stay for dinner. Stay for <laughs> dinner. We'll take you. That's a nice one. Sweet. Cooper sandwich. Well, sir, what do you say we put this one on the ice and uh, see if there's another one down there? I think there might be. <laughs> Rig it right by Wright and Miguel. On today's Rig It Right segment, I'm gonna show you what Captain Chris Trossett had us throwing on our last day in the Tortugas. We started off just like any other day out there. We anchored up kinda of on a slope that goes drops way down, and uh, we started chumming, catching yellowtail for bait, and we were throwing six foot nine rods, eight foot rods, catching the yellowtail. Using the pink Fins Wind Tamer line, and this is the 20 pound test, and uh, definitely getting the job done out there. We were throwing the new 6.6 jigging rod, and this is the conventional rod. Had it going down with six ounces of lead because there was a little bit of current down there. 60 to 80 pound test cigar fluorocarbon. Depending on how dirty the water is, those big giant fish down there can definitely see it and they might shy away from it. So you kind of want to go with either 60 or 80, all depending on the size of the fish and how clear the water is. But uh, had it rigged up with 80 pound test wind tamer, and it was definitely getting the job done. Now what we were doing, we were anchored up kind of on a slope as it goes down and we were chumming up the yellowtail. If you're using the yellowtail for bait, they have to be legal size. And that's what we were using. We were using pretty good size baits to get those big grouper down there. But uh, that was the last stop. If you ever get a chance to head down there, once again, you better go fish with Captain Chris Trossett. Remember one thing though, every fishing season starts right here at Dick's. Rig it right by Wright and Miguel. Well, we're back here at the dock at the Weston Hotel Marina right here in Key West. Had three awesome days of fishing out near the Dry Tortugas. If y'all ever get a chance to go fishing with Captain Chris Trossett, I highly recommend it. One awesome kid to fish with. Also want to say thanks to the Starbright crew. Without these guys, this trip would have never happened. So that's about it from Key West. Y'all tune into the website, addictedfishing.com. Show us your Mogan, all that kind of good stuff, and we'll see you next week. Check out more footage from this show by logging on to addictivefishing.com for outtakes and bloopers. That's yeah, about the same. Ah. Oh, it was on the rack. Oh, better tighten that drag down. Something you gotta watch out for, folks, for those teeth right there because they will flat cut your fingers off. Ah.